Hello, welcome to the channel. I haven't posted for a few days. Today's Friday. Tuesday, I was stood just over there. Outside that woodshed. And I thought it was a good day because Monday, it just rained all weekend. and you, The whole world knows about the rain. Right? So we ain't no exception, except soon it's going to turn to snow. So um, Tuesday, it wasn't raining. I thought, oh, nice day. Can I do something I want to do today? Well, I could do something I want to do every day, but it ain't always possible. So Tuesday, I decided to run the sawmill. So before I run the sawmill, I had to do a bit of tidying up and stuff. And I was just stood out that side that woodshed and I twisted, picked something up. I haven't twisted in 11 weeks. I'm 11 weeks out of my disc removal operation and I haven't twisted. And I twisted and there was a, an enormous pop, the likes of which I've never heard before in my back and then instant pain across my back. Oh, I knew I was in trouble. So sometime later I managed to get upstairs where I laid for three days until yesterday morning and there was no improvement. And I wasn't attempting the stairs or doing anything. So um, the health service is incredible in some ways, incredible in a lot of ways. Anyway, after about 40 minutes waiting on the phone, finally my surgeon answered the phone. I'd, I'd gone through the, the system and um, I was asked a number of very specific questions to which I answered. Um, and then I uh, was asked to do some very specific things, which I did. Okay, so uh, then the conclusion to that was that um, the disc removal op was successful and there's nothing wrong with my spine. Running up my spine, there's a ligament with muscle attached to it and because I hadn't twisted, this ligament was tore, tensed, tensioned, caught on something and released. And that was the pop. And with its release, it tore muscles. So it was kind of proven with the tests I had to do that there was nothing wrong with my spine. And if I was to take this certain painkiller that most of the pain would go away and I would be able to carry on as normal. So I was told to uh, take painkiller on that day if it works. Well, we've already pretty much proved what it was and tomorrow you can have another painkiller and go back to work. And today's tomorrow. I don't know. It's, it's painful. It don't particularly feel muscular. Anyway, that's what I've been told. So uh, I've done some clearing up in the yard and specifically cleaned up the sawmill behind me. And um, I think this morning, oh, well, it's lunchtime now. I think we're going to run the sawmill. I've got a lot of boards, a lot of cubes here. This is this year's. This is the stuff that's come from the big tree felling job. And that's last year's. And I need boards for tongue and groove and wall boards. And I need some stud partitions for the winter. So I don't really feel as if I should be, but anyway, if it's only muscular, it's not gonna do any damage, is it? So I'm going to um, start tractor up. Do we get the feeling you're being watched? I'm going to start the chapter up and um, grab some of these cubes, put them on, start boarding. So um, I think I'm going to cut at 110. Could do with a finish size of 18 really. Perhaps I'll cut 110 by 20 because um, I want to do something else interesting. So uh, we'll cut as many boards as we can this afternoon. I'm a bit reluctant to take any more painkillers. I don't know, you don't. I'm not overly happy with it, but I was told to take painkiller and go back to work. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run the sawmill, see how we get on. Here we go. Now, as I'm sure some of you will remember, my sawmill was a Woodland Mills HM130. I've cleaned it out a bit today. So I've never really explained this. I've put this under this temporary building I built three years ago, temporary. Only supposed to be here for one year. Because I actually had planning permission to build a new sawmill building here, a big one. Um, basically, same size as that. 
Uh, and whilst I have obtained planning permission, I don't have the money to build it. So this is where we are. I never actually imagined this building would last as many winters as it has. So I'm a bit sceptical going into its third winter. Anyway, so I've cleaned it up and I popped a new blade on it on Tuesday morning before my back went pop. So uh, we have a new blade sitting on it, which I have, um, well, I did uh, make sure it was all running through. Let's open her up so you can see. I'm going to start off with a new blade. We can run new blades. A new blade will run for many hours on this. It's the bark, the logs that kill it. So uh, we'll take a look and just see. This has dried quite well since it's been barked, even though we've had endless amounts of rain and it has been raining a lot. So this is our selection we've got that we can cut. We've got a spruce down there. The rest of it's all fair. Now that might be a spruce there, actually. And then um, we haven't finished across the other side of the valley, bringing this stuff in. So you've seen that I've now sorted and separated. So this is what we've got from the other side. And uh, you remember in the other video, this is the problem with putting this through the sawmill, is all the dirt and everything pushed into it. So I've taken the decision I'm going to jet wash this lot rather than strip the bike. And then we've got this, which was end of last year's. I'm not quite sure how much blue this is going to have in it, but I suspect a bit. But on the whole, it's out here all winter. On the whole, it's not too bad. So we might um, put a couple of those through the mill and see what they clean up like. And that's the other end of that lot. Um, I've got one nice straight Bjork grass birch. Um, it's straight and it's nice and I'm going to turn this into boards, not firewood. And on the subject of firewood, with everything that has been coming in, we are getting somewhere near our goal. So the shed is now about 50% stacked and there's this on the floor which will finish that row and get halfway up another row. So <sighs> that bit of wood sticking out there, that's halfway, so we're not quite halfway yet. But you can see how we're, we're getting there slowly, but there's nothing else to be cut and split for firewood at the moment. I haven't brought anything else in. So this, this back thing was a bit of a showstopper. Right. So we'll get the tractor up and running and see where we go from there. Might do a little investigation over here to find out why said hund is um, lying on the sticks. Why for you lie on the sticks? Do you know? You don't know, do you? Right then, off to the action.
That's not very pretty, is it? I think we might be surprised by what we got inside here. Mm.
Now, I didn't think this felt right. Let me show you what I can see once we get you out from there. See that? We're about to run off that wheel. We're already off the back. And when that runs off that wheel, that comes off and that smashes the blade. So what we've got is we've got a build up on this wheel, which changes the tracking. See all this sticky residue builds up on this wheel. This brush don't take it off. And then we've also got a build up on that. And this changes the tracking on the machine. And you can feel it and I could feel it. And you can see how that's not on that wheel. So then what we do <coughs> is we take a knife <coughs> and we go around and we clean all the wheels off and then we retract the blade get the blade back on and then we can run it again
So that was uh, three cubes, three trees there. This is what we got so far. So I'm cutting these at 110 by 20. That's 110 I'm cutting these 110 by 20. That's 110 millimeters by 20 meters, 20 millimeters. I suppose I should convert that into Imperial because I can work in Imperial and metric. And then in addition to what we've got down there, we've also got some two by fours, 100 by 50s. 
There we go, we've got a few of those. That's for the stud work. And all that over there, that's all gonna be going through our borrowed molder into tongue and groove. So last year, well, you'll see this video before you see the videos from last year, because all the videos from last year are on GoPro. But anyway, that's the starting of what will be a monster pack. I think I need five, six, seven, eight times that amount. Anyway, there'll be an exceedingly big pack and, and another small pack on top of that pack by the time that's finished. Uh, and of course, it's not even made a dent in what we're doing over there. So that's that. My theories on this. Okay, the blade's running back where it should do now. So you can see the yuck all over the blade. And um, getting to know this machine, I had a lot of problems. And it all stemmed from that. So my problems were the, the wheels running off aquaplaning, this mess, the gunkiness. Now I've never, and I've had a lot of saws, big saws, really big saws i've never had to run anything with water any sort of cooling um there was an argument on the stenners sometimes we'd we'd run cooling but only with mahogany um not with softwoods so i've constantly had this problem and i haven't run water in this machine now for over a year and i run water today at barely a drip a second and this is the yucky build up i'm getting so um you saw me touch the blade earlier after it made a pass, and that was to feel how warm it's getting. I think even though the timber where we're running is dry, I think I'm gonna run this without any water. Because I have to get this blade 100% clean before I can sharpen it. So not only does a build up like that on the blade make it track off the wheels, because you see the build up there, and it tracks off, it also causes me, well, it takes an extra hour to clean this blade before I sharpen it, because otherwise it won't go through the sharpener, it just jams up, and then it will cut it in half, or cut a tooth off completely, or all manner of other things. And the other thing that we're doing, we don't normally do, normally we don't keep the sawdust. Not because I don't want to keep the sawdust, because I don't have a way of drying it, but because this is dry, we're now keeping the sawdust. And there's a reason for that. It's just about every building in this country, well certainly in the north, is insulated with sawdust. So how they build the houses, they build the houses out of wood, around the chimney, around the fireplace. And then they backfill every orifice with sawdust. Highly explosive. Anybody knows anything about sawdust. Just an explosive combination. Do many buildings burn down? Oh yes. Oh yes, the uh, brickwork or tiles as they like to call them inside the chimneys are not good and you get black spot and you get a chimney fire and then it spreads. There also seems to be a lot of cases of lightning strikes and houses burning down. Anyway, when you've got a lot of houses, and they're not houses, they're shacks with tin roofs, when you've got a lot of shacks with tin roofs full of sawdust with a fireplace in the middle, expect some fires. Even the houses that are nice, that don't look like they're built of wood with a fireplace in the middle stuffed full of sawdust, are built of wood with a tin roof with sawdust squeezed in every orifice. Anyway, we're keeping that sawdust because I haven't got enough explosive material in my buildings and, you know, we might want to top that up. So that's uh, that's about it for now. I think I think that's a big enough test on my, my back. What does it feel like? Oh, don't feel good. Don't feel good. And there's a puppy there. Look. All day. Never ends. So that's pretty much part of the process. So firstly, we cut it from the forest. And then we cube it. And then we turn those cords into boards. And then those boards will go into the factory and they will go through um, our new machine, which I haven't introduced you yet, and they'll come out the end finished. 
And last year, everything was done on a spindle molder. Um, there's plenty of footage of that. It'll come, it'll come, but what a pain. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. Bye for now. What am I looking at? I don't know. You get the feeling you're getting watched. He's always watching. Catch you on the next one.